One aspect of video games that I always enjoy is having the ability to do character customization. Taking the time to lovingly craft a character as you go and progress through the game really feels like a different experience. And this week, I'm going to draw one of those characters. So hi everyone, I'm Ward and welcome to my channel Ward Draws A Lot, and this week we're going to draw my, well, custom character from Elden Ring. I'm somebody who is very big on video games and I love the fact that I can go in and create a character, especially because I am an artist and I feel like the ability to make and create something is always kind of instilled in me. So whenever I get the chance to, whether it's from art or, you know, from somebody else's art but engineering my own character from it, then why not? The art that I'm, of course, engineering it from is the game Elden Ring. I don't know if you guys consider video games as pieces of art or not, but I definitely do. They take a lot of time crafting these things, the mechanics, the engineering, the people who go in and do all these character plannings and drawings and a, a whole bunch of art <laughs> just goes on behind a lot of these kinds of video games, not just Elden Ring, but a bunch of them. So in my, uh, I guess viewpoint, I view all video games as a kind of art form and the fact that we take it in like media. Just like movies, I feel like movies are definitely an art form, so our TV shows, anything that would definitely have to do with creating the character themselves, the scenarios, the scenes, everything is definitely an art form in my eyes. We're mainly going to be talking about my Elden Ring character in this video because, well, that's who I'm drawing. But there are other games that are a part of this series called the Soulsborne series, which include Elden Ring, Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, um, Bloodborne, Sekiro, Demon Souls. I think that's all of them. So, of all those games, I personally have played, I played Bloodborne first, which... I started out with one of the better games first, uh, shouldn't have, but I did. But honestly, I think through playing Bloodborne, it helped me a lot down the line with all these other games. I've done Bloodborne Dark Souls 1, which uh, was a good game. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of it because I just, I don't know, it was very tiring to me, but it doesn't mean I hate it. <laughs> it just means that it was tiring to me. I did Dark Souls 2, which is sadly my favorite so far. <laughs> Until I, you know, beat Elden Ring, and I know saying that I, you know, have Dark Souls 2 as my favorite would end up me being, like, you know, thrown off of a cliff in the, the Soulsborne, like, world, because the meme is that Dark Souls 2 is the worst game out of the entire series. But I honestly really liked the game. I really liked the game, and I really became attached to it for some reason, so Dark Souls 2 so far is my favorite and now I'm currently going through Elden Ring. I wanted to do three before Elden Ring, but I was gifted Elden Ring for my birthday. And I was like, you know what, since it's here in my hands, I might as well play it. So downgrading from Elden Ring to any other Souls game <laughs> after this is going to be a little bit of an adjustment. But honestly, if I'm going to have fun with it anyway, then I'm going to have fun with it. Now, that being said, when it comes to character customization, Elden Ring is definitely the better one of these games, in my opinion, uh, that I've seen so far. So maybe the opinion will change once I go down the line and play other games. But as of right now, Elden Ring does have the best character customization that I've seen, mostly because it just doesn't look like garbage. <laughs> Like, I'm, I really, like, I sit there and I take pride, like, and hours upon hours of customizing a character if I really want to. And, like, Elden Ring allowed me to do that. It gave me detailed appearances and appearances? Oh, man. Detailed appearances, uh, different hairstyles. You could do everything down to the nose, the eyebrow bridge. Like, that's what I like, extreme detail in the character because it's my character at the end of the day, right? So that is the better versions the <laughs> the older souls games um tend to kind of have way crappier customization for characters uh they got better with time so like of course we had like dark souls 1 versus 2 versus 3 and the customization gets better over time bloodborne was pretty good with the character customization but like a lot of the time you lose a lot of details or it just doesn't look too good in all honesties and it's because of the character models themselves or just how it was made for the time that it had come out especially because some of these games are a little older and you know you got to do what you got to do with what you have. So whatever systems these were on, it was most likely the best they could do for those systems. 
but but they are remastering a lot of these games or have remastered them i think uh, they already have for a lot of them except for the whole joke that bloodborne is never going to get like a 60 fps <laughs> remaster or something like that like there's a whole joke that bloodborne is just done and forgotten and nobody gives a fuck <laughs> about it. and everybody wants it to be you know like the frames upped but like they're never gonna do it <laughs> so there's that joke but with uh these games a lot of the time they're going back in fixing a lot of the jankiness or like how the character customization probably looks so there's also that to take into account now i do have i believe photos of the bloodborne character which wasn't too bad looking and the dark souls one character which in my honest opinion he was kind of cute the dark souls 2 character was pretty ugly <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, my Dark Souls 2 character was pretty ugly, so I don't know if I have any photos of him, but I will check like my PlayStation capture gallery and see if I did, and if I did, I'll put him up on the screen and you'll see exactly why I said he was ugly, especially <laughs> compared to like the Bloodborne or Dark Souls 1 character, or even the Elden Ring character, because the Elden Ring character is extremely gorgeous, he's like constantly fucking mewing <laughs> at his screen, he's just like mogged up. <laughs> up but he's like really pretty and that's why i was like really tempted to draw him especially after i put on this armor set and i saw like everything come together i was like wow this character is like actually gorgeous i have to put them down on paper and that's exactly what i ended up doing now when it comes to uh making characters i don't know if you guys do this too but sometimes i'll make a little story along with them or i'll paint this certain picture of them that like i like to keep in my mind as I'm playing, especially because I feel like that creates the character like to life. Instead of just playing as the character, you are the character themselves, you get me? Now a little disclaimer, when I'm playing the Soulsborne series, right, uh, I don't develop the character at least until a little over maybe a quarter to halfway through the game. And I'll tell you why, okay? It's because you don't get no swag <laughs> until you reach at least some type of level in the game. Otherwise, you're picking up scraps from enemies <laughs> and just trying to survive with any kind of armor. So you don't actually get anything good to create this aesthetic of the character until, you know, you get your ass whooped a little bit. And then the game slowly, like, gives you the prize of, hey, you defeated this really hard boss or... Hey, there are these enemies that are like really hard, but like if you beat them, you get something cool. So for me, a lot of the time when I'm playing the Soulsborne series, that's what happens is I don't develop the character until I get a really cool piece of armor and I'm like, damn, that really does suit them. So that's exactly what we're going for here. Okay, so for reference, I've been on this really big barbarian kick recently, right? Where I like the barbarian look slash barbarian-esque kind of aesthetic, and I really wanted to apply that to this character, so once I finally got the armor pieces that like kind of fit in with that story, that's what I went for. And whenever I think of barbarian, I think of like big sword, fur, uh, no shirt, because <laughs> that's- Oh, damn, y'all heard that? Damn! Well, if, if you did hear that, that was a thunderstorm, so if you hear that rain in the background, uh, that's why. Um, as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by uh, nature. <laughs> uh, the whole idea of like the no shirt, the fur, the big weapon, that's very barbarian-esque. So once I tried to apply that to the character, I really felt like it suited him. Even though he's very pretty boy in the face, I was like, you know, I'd, I like the idea of pretty boy face but you know, armor and is like a barbarian warrior. So let me read you the armor that kind of made this all come together. For reference, my um, armor set here is kind of mashed up together from either what I found or after big enemies uh, I've defeated. And I'll let you know which is which. Um, a lot of the time I can't find full armor sets for something, either because it wasn't made or because the RNG or random number generation, like the drops in the game, just don't let me get the thing that I want, aka the fire monk cloak. I have been trying <laughs> for so long, I literally have respawned in areas like a million times just to get this stupid red <laughs> cloak that I can't get because of course it wouldn't let me have it because I wanted it. So <laughs> so depending on what drops in the game, I either get it, use it, etc, etc. Now some of these, um, because they are like behind bosses or certain characters in the game, might be a little difficult to explain like where they I guess come from without you playing it, 
or if you have played it, you know where I am coming from when I'm reading the description. For reference, all of these items within Elden Ring or any of these Souls games, honestly, have a description on them and then you can read it to kind of further knowledge your lore about a lot of the things in these games. Because although these are wonderful games, the story isn't very outright in front of you unless you're like somebody who connects dots really well or somebody who like does the research. And 99% of the time, <laughs> I feel like with Soulsborne games, you have to do the research, which is reading more in depthly within descriptions of items or within the descriptions of weapons and uh, armor. So everything is just kind of pasted together. A lot of the time, whenever I play these games, I don't know what the hell is going on until like I start connecting dots <laughs> halfway through the game, which is why I end up watching videos on YouTube explaining the story because people <laughs> are way better at that <laughs> than I am just playing the game. They go in depth and they really explain things out and I honestly enjoy watching those videos, especially going back in and learning about a lot of the lore that I missed, especially after playing and finishing up these games. Okay, the first part of the armor that I really want to talk about is the top, which is called the Champion Pauldron. This is what really solidifies the barbarian-esque aesthetic within this character, so much so that even if I had to change out of it for certain reasons or if I get tired of it, I will literally always go back to it because I like it so much and how it looks on the character. So the Champion Pauldron has kind of like this shoulder cuff and is kind of wrapped on with this really large rope. Under that, on his arms, he has these two smaller armbands. On his neck is this kind of scarf, and the wraparound looks more like fur than anything to me. And as it is wrapped around, the thing that's holding it up is another rope and a chain and a red rag that is kind of there, I think, for maybe that's just for a better look of it. Maybe it belonged to like some kind of lore, but I honestly don't know. But that whole look put together is what makes it definitely feel barbarian-esque. The description says, a pauldron reserved for the Badlands bravest, proof that the wearer has slaughtered countless foes. Following the example of their chieftain Hanaralu, the brave warriors of the Badlands shun excess adornment. So through that little description, we could see that if they shun excess adornment, they keep it really simple and naturistic, right? They have like very, um, not little, but I guess you could say little to do with the armor. It's very just like simple and ready to go when you need to get into the fight. So I think that that's a cool little description for this armor and kind of paints the picture of like a warrior. Next, we're going to talk about the gauntlets. Now, the gauntlets and the pants both came from this enemy that I defeated called General Radon. He is, you know, a part of the story, and I kind of don't want to get into it because, number one, I'm not going to explain it too well. <laughs> and number two, I feel like it's... I don't know, like, I don't know if uh, explaining the entire character's lore would do you any good unless you actually played the game in this case, especially because... Again, Soulsborne characters are very, like, they're very specific. Just know that he went crazy <laughs> and we had to defeat him, which is a lot of the time what happens in the Soulsborne games. If you are interested in the story, however, I would really suggest looking up somebody on YouTube who would do a really good explanation of Elden Ring. I don't want to look that up because I don't want to get, like, too spoiled about it or, like, you know, have to rethink a lot of things. I just kind of want to go into the gameplay blind and then after look up the video, which is what I've kind of already been doing with a lot of these uh, Soulsborne games. But anyway, so the description of the gauntlet says gauntlets depicting the golden lion. The golden lion is said to symbolize Godfrey, another Elden Ring character, the first Elden Lord, and his beast re regent, Saroche. From his younger years, Radon was naturally captivated by the Lord of the Battlefield. So from that little excerpt in the description, we could see that through the first Elden Lord, Radon was captivated by it and then used that golden lion to kind of symbolize it, which is very interesting because I'm guessing before he went crazy, he really did have have maybe like a sense of pride or something instilled within him. Again, I'm really bad at these like Soulsborne stories, guys. I really am. These are like the stories that like I just 
my brain is off. I just go in, I hit, and then after, I'm like, oh, okay, that's why I did that. <laughs> and in almost all of my Soulsborne playthroughs, I'm very much attack first and then learn later. <laughs> because in this game, you have to, or else you just fucking die in the field. The next part of the armor is the pants or the greaves. So this is Radon's greaves. The greaves depicting the golden lion again, which was worn by General Radon. And it gives the same description as it did before because, you know, it's connected. They both have the golden lion for a reason because he looked up to the first Elden Lord. When it comes to me putting a helmet on my character, I usually never do in any of the games except for Dark Souls 2, because again, that character was ugly, so we put a helmet on him. <laughs> but for most of them, I don't put a helmet on the character because I like to see the character's face. So if I find like a headband or at some point I also used like um, little like head... Uh, headwear like a hat or something on the character just so I wouldn't hide their face however at some point I took it off just because I was like I just want the character themselves next I'm going to talk about what he uses to fight and that's of course his sword and shield the sword that he uses is a heavy great sword it the description reads it's a coarse iron lump of an ultra great sword mows down foes by utilizing its incredible weight Though handling it likely requires the wielder to have surpassed the realm of merely human, it is precisely for that reason the weapon is used to slaughter even inhuman foes. It's basically just a massive heavy sword that can be swung side to side, which is its benefit, is that it's swung side to side and can kind of mow enemies down versus like a smaller, thinner sword that you would have to be kind of up close and take on enemies one by one or two, depending on how close they are next to each other. But with this Ultra Great Sword, because of its weight and like how long it is, you could take down a good amount of enemies and also it does some real heavy damage. But the like downside, because there's always a downside, side to something in this game is that it takes a little bit longer to actually physically swing because it's such a heavy lump of iron so that's where the idea that the character or person wielding it has to be inhuman because you would need so much strength to move that sword that it's almost like unhuman now finally for his shield, it's called the Jellyfish Shield. It's the head of a spirit jellyfish commonly found floating above sacred grounds throughout the lands between, wielded without modification as a shield. The see-through head is extremely light, but its flesh is supple, providing absolutely no protection from piercing attacks. Of course, as stated before, there's always a downside to something. So although this shield is, you know, really cool looking and has a kind of ability to it to where if you pop the ability, you get like a little bit more of a stronger hit on enemies. It The downside that it has is that it can't take any piercing damage because the uh, flesh of the jellyfish is supple and soft. So, you know, you have your ups and downs with a lot of these things in this game. And I'm personally somebody who will take the hit if it looks cool. <laughs> so if the armor gives me like no protection, but it looks great on my character, I don't care. I'll take the extra hits. And that's with every game, not just any of the Soulsborne games. But I'm somebody who prioritizes the fashion <laughs> in the game over like the protection. So I'll take that hit as long as he's looking cute doing it. Now, when it comes to the sketchbook spread, I really wanted to at least fit in a good amount of poses in there to kind of tell the story of this character, especially now that I have this larger sketchbook, I can fit more in, but now the issue is that it's going to take much longer to do so because of how big this paper is and how many things I've got going on. So the three main things that I really wanted to get in there was number one, just like a really cool looking pose. So that's this pose on the left where he's holding his sword and kind of looking over at the viewer and has his shield in his hand. I think that that kind of shows his like cool side to him. By the way, I think this character would be like a really quiet character. I don't know if you guys get that same vibe, but he he literally like gives me like very kind of quiet, shy vibes, which is very strange because usually a barbarian is not that <laughs> so it's very funny like the juxtaposition between the two um so i really wanted to get that in there that pose where he's just holding the sword and looking over i really think that that's awesome looking the second pose on the bottom is him with his hand out and a bunch of eyeballs in his hand <laughs> and that's actually a part of the story which is where you have to give these 
eyeballs called Shabriri grapes to this blind girl in order to help her with her quest. And uh, the reason why I did that one or this pose is because I really wanted to like like the girl and headcanon marry her for my character. But then, of course, something happens to the character, the the blind girl. And I was like, all right, fuck the whole idea that I guess I can't have fucking anything. <laughs> so that's why I have my character kind of holding out the, the Shabriri grapes in his hand as she's asking, do you have any Shabriri grapes? And he's like, these? Like, he's like looking over with the grapes in his hand or eyeballs, really. And he's like, um, these? <laughs> And the last one that I drew was him desperately chugging the uh, flask of Crimson Tears. I had to look up the name again just because my brain defaulted to Estus Flask, which is usually what it was in other Souls games. So that's why I was like, wait, what was it? But yes, the flask of, Cer of Crimson Tears, I keep thinking Cerulean Tears, of, <laughs> of Crimson Tears. I'll read you the description of that one too. So it's a sacred flask modeled after a golden holy chalice that was once graced by a tear of blessing. Filled with crimson tears, the flask restores HP with use. You can rest at the side of grace to replenish it. The one washed up on the gravesite was sure to die until this flask offered its gift of rejuvenation to seek the Elden Ring. Dang, that lighting is a little crazy. But, um, yes, as I was saying before the thunder popped up again, um, I have my character here, uh, desperately drinking this, um, flask because I, <laughs> again, am somebody who runs in and hits without a second thought. And, um, because of that, <laughs> I get hit a lot, which means I really, really, <laughs> really rely on this flask right here to save me because, you know, it's like a health potion. It's the only thing that's going to keep me alive the entire fight. And I um, am very, very likely to almost always use it throughout the fight until I only have none left. And then I'm sitting there screwed <laughs> because I've used them all up because I don't like pick up my shield <laughs> and I don't like actually um, strategize. I just go in and hit until I win, um, which uh, surprisingly enough works to my advantage a lot of the time through that method of just not giving a shit i just walk in and hit and then leave and then i'm like okay i'm satisfied with it but my friends watching me will get so irritated <laughs> because they're like yo please like develop a strategy or like pick up your shield or something like my friend actually yelled at me at some point he was like pick up your shield please so <laughs> eventually i started doing that but honestly i don't care if it works for me <laughs> It works for me so i guess that also adds to his barbarian character is go in hit and then leave <laughs> so i think that i really like that that it kind of suits this character as well for the um i guess backgrounds of each character they all kind of have like a mini one or somewhat of one the one standing with the sword in his hand which is the one you see on screen right now has like somewhat of a background behind him i tried like really like <laughs> like i guess you could say primitively drawing the erd tree in the background which is this beautiful massive gorgeous tree that once you get up close to you could really see it and like how gorgeous it is i tried doing some mountains behind him some dirt on the ground kind of like you could see him in the foreground and then in the background is the destination which is the erd tree for the character with the grapes i guess the quote unquote like background or little like snid bit for him is the girl in the corner or like the speech bubble in the corner saying do you have any shabiri grapes which i spelled wrong by the way of course <laughs> it was shabiri not shabiri but like of course i would fuck that up so you have that and the little background for the one drinking the flask or like little additive is on top of him i put up the health bar the blue bar which is for like um special moves slash magic and then the green bar under that which is the stamina so like as he's drinking the flask, it is replenishing his health, which is why you see it from like dark red, orange and pink, kind of like like the health is being added back to it. All in all, this is probably one of my favorite sketchbook spreads of all time. I think it tells the story really well and the character looks gorgeous. I feel like I really did capture him pretty well in my style. I do sadly believe that he looks different a little bit in, <laughs> in each one, but like I think that's just because whenever i use this sketchbook i've noticed that it's hard to kind of keep the same face because the blends kind of make it all disappear but regardless i love it 
So yeah, thanks for watching and remember I love you. Bye.